Welcome back, guys! Okay, you weren't here before, but what I mean is that welcome back to budget gaming PCs. That's right, it has been over a year since we've been able to do anything. Stream, pre-recorded video, anything showing you guys building a legitimate gaming PC with a dedicated GPU for under $1,000. But that is exactly what we are going to be doing today. Sort of. Okay, so here's the thing. When we started planning this, this video, we didn't have our hands on AMD's new 6500 XT GPU yet. We had high hopes for it. It was supposed to have not enough RAM to be appealing to miners. It was supposed to have a low enough MSRP that you could actually build a gaming rig for under $1,000. But it was also supposed to have enough performance to be competitive with, you know, budget GPUs from two or three years ago. And I guess it does kind of have that. But... We're not sure now that we actually have our hands on it and we've tested it, if it makes sense to put it in the machine. Fortunately, we thought of that because we're gonna let you guys choose. As we go through and we build this rig, we're gonna let you guys decide. Do we stick with our onboard graphics on our 5600G CPU or do we go for the dedicated GPU or do you guys wanna see me put them head to head? Is this thing even worth the nearest MSRP? You can actually buy these things for just over 200 US dollars. They're in stock now. Is it even worth it compared to just sticking with onboard? So that's the theme of the day, and it is brought to you by Micro Center. Micro Center is a store, and I don't have my talking points up yet, so here we go. Micro Center is a fantastic brick and mortar store for shopping PC hardware and everything else technology. They've got over 25 locations across the US and over 30,000 items in stock. Microsoft has what you need to finish your PC setup or finish any DIY tech project, and we're gonna have them linked down below. They're offering new customers a free 240 gig SSD, valid in store only, no purchase necessary, new customers only. So let's get this started with our motherboard. Um, I know this has been kind of a theme over the last <clears throat> couple of years, but due to shortages, we went with this board. <laughs> it's the B550 Tough Gaming from ASUS. We went with the non-Wi-Fi version, excuse me, B550 Plus Tough Gaming from ASUS. We went with the non-Wi-Fi version because we were looking to kind of save a buck, make this an affordable rig that people could actually build for themselves and, um, you know, enjoy a, a gaming experience. <laughs> I don't want to oversell it. <laughs> it's such a shame. I mean, man, my... <sighs> Do you ever feel like you're just in kind of an abusive relationship lately, you guys? No, I'm serious, though. Like, like we, we, we've said before, right? Companies are not your friends, right? They, they don't care about you. It's, it's profits first at the end of the day because corporations, especially publicly held ones, are beholden to their shareholders first and foremost. But that doesn't change the fact that whether it's, you know, corporations, whether we're talking sports teams that are corporations or uh, manufacturers of the products that we're passionate about and that we love, be it, be it games or be it PCs, uh, they, maybe we're just falling for the marketing hype or maybe it's just human nature. We, we develop relationships with these entities, right? I mean, why are you guys tuned into this stream when you're supposed to be at work? Right, because you just, you love Linus Media Group Incorporated so much that you guys wanna, you just wanna hang out with us. You wanna hang with me and David and Ploof over there who's supervising me to make sure I don't say anything wrong and Chase who's wearing a beautiful pink toque. Hey, thanks Chase. Um, and so, you know, what happens is you just, you, you, wanna, you wanna trust them, right? You wanna believe them. And time and time again, they say, hey, we're gonna have this new product. It's gonna be super exciting. You're gonna love it. And then just over the last couple of years, it's just been like getting pooed on over and over and over again. And not in like a, not in like a kinky, like you're into it sort of way. In just a, uh, an uncomfortable, this wasn't consensual kind of way. And the 6500 XT was just yet another example of that. To be clear, I think that AMD at least made an effort here. 
I think that in trying to make the card not appealing to miners in any meaningful way, they just overshot the mark a little bit and made it not very appealing to um, gamers. So let's talk a little bit more about what makes the 6500 XT such a challenge, but also the saving grace, which is that we can put an APU into this socket that actually has a decent GPU on board and still get an okay gaming experience. So for our motherboard, we've spent about $170. It's full-size ATX, which means we get all the expansion that comes with that. You can switch me over to my overhead. It's got AMD's AM4 socket, which is, a, okay, a dead platform at this point. We're not gonna see any more upgrades to this other than maybe the 50, uh, the 5800 XT with the 3D V cache, that kind of stuff. AMD claims we're going to see a significant gaming boost from that. They, they, I think they want to retain the gaming crown. I think that remains to be seen. Dual channel DDR4 memory, a couple of M.2 slots, including uh, <clears throat> this one. That's where you put the Wi-Fi card on the on the Wi-Fi version of it. And then for our SSD, we've gone with the 660p series. That's one thing that actually hasn't been too bad throughout the silicon shortage is SSDs. Uh, Availability has been pretty good. Prices have continued to steadily march downward. This puppy costs us under $100, so it's $90 on sale at Micro Center right now. I mean, I remember when the only affordable size of SSD was like 80 gigs, and that was still like 250 bucks. So to have a boot drive and throw a bunch of your games on it, you were literally talking about buying multiples, putting them in RAID 0 on your SATA motherboard, which caused all kinds of bottlenecks between the CPU and chipset link and all that kind of stuff. Man, those were good times. Those were good times. I mean, it was it was fun, right? Like I I liked the I liked the workaround. I liked trying to trying to find ways around it. And you know what I ended up doing? I treated myself to a hardware raid card, secondhand, uh, from I think it was Adaptech or something like that back in the day. And then I plugged that into one of my one of my PCI Express slots so that I could alleviate that bottleneck by using PCIe. All right, let's go ahead and install our CPU. One of the most exciting products over the last couple of years has actually been AMD's APUs. And it's not that Intel doesn't have their own flavor of APU. Intel has onboard graphics on virtually all of their CPUs, and they just don't call them APUs. Uh, but what's so exciting about AMD's is that particularly on a driver level, AMD just has so much, so much more experience than Intel to the point where Everything from performance to compatibility just makes more sense on an, on an AMD onboard GPU. And I'm hoping, I'm rooting for that to change over the next year or two as Intel launches more products with their XE graphics. But for the time being, 5600G, six cores, 12 threads, it's clocked high enough that it's not going to be a bottleneck of any sort uh, when you, well, okay, I shouldn't quite say that because we managed to pick one of the only GPUs on the market that <clears throat> this particular platform is going to manage to bottleneck. I'll give you guys an explanation of that. But in terms of CPU raw performance, it's not going to create any kind of bottleneck in a reasonable system. And most importantly, it has a 7CU onboard GPU that's going to be enough for us to play at least like you know, basic games. You're going to be able to play your esports titles at 1080p, no problem. You're going to be able to play more complex games at, you know, maybe 720p, okay? So you're not turning up the resolution. You're turning all the details down, but at least you can freaking game. Uh, so we're pulling off the bracket so we can install AMD's much, much better than Intel stock cooler. Though with that said, Intel has a new stock cooler coming for this generation apparently that's supposed to be way better. And that is something that we are going to be testing. Uh, we, we have that, that's that's planned, right, Ploof? Yeah. We're doing Intel stock cooler versus Intel stock cooler? Yeah, they're here. Yeah, the featherweight, the featherweight showdown of the century. You know, the, uh, the, the fight that's barely even on the card. <laughs> the one everyone forgot about. <laughs> I don't know, we have fun with that kind of stuff though. Uh, do note guys, I haven't forgotten Thermal Compound. It is pre-applied to AMD's stock cooler and because this is a budget build, I would nearly always recommend sticking with the stock cooler. Uh, aftermarket cooling is the kind of thing that's, it's great, right? You wanna run quieter, you wanna run cooler, you wanna do some overclocking, whatever the case may be. 
Absolutely. You know, treat yourself to a nice little cooler from the likes of Be Quiet or Noctua. But if you are just looking to get the game running, man, if there's a stock cooler included, you should absolutely go for it. So we're just going to get, I realize I haven't done very much actual instructional stuff on this uh, <clears throat> build video so far. So we're going to go ahead and tighten down our screws in a cross pattern here. Oh, with our LTT store screwdriver, man, guys, I got a story to tell you about the screwdriver. I'm not gonna let this build stretch out into a four hour video again this week, so I'm gonna just make sure I'm building computers while, I'm, while we're doing story time. <laughs> but you guys have been, you've been asking me, you've been hounding me, when is the screwdriver coming? When is the screwdriver coming? And I gave you guys an update recently where I went, well, look, one of the big problems is that our manufacturer for the ratchets, who is based in Taiwan, was acquired by one of the biggest tool companies in the world. And we didn't find that out in a timely manner. So we were sitting there going, hey, when are you going to produce our ratchets? Hey, when are you going to produce our ratchets? We need our golden samples. We need to, we need to check them over for quality. When are you going to produce our ratchets? They're like, oh, yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it. Oh, by the way, <clears throat> we've been acquired by a competitor. We actually have an enormous conflict of interest and uh, no business incentive whatsoever to, oh wow, okay, that was a whole thing. Uh, we have no business incentive whatsoever to produce really anything for you. So we've been exploring other manufacturers and um, yesterday I made a decision that may have been one of the most difficult decisions of my career. And that is that I, um, I, have, <clears throat> I have telegraphed my willingness to kiss our deposit with our Taiwan-based manufacturer goodbye because we've gotten samples from a China-based manufacturer that actually are higher quality than the ones that we initially got from the Taiwan-based manufacturer because we do actually have a couple of, of samples from them. We just don't have what was supposed to be the big run of golden samples. And um, I have made the decision to, to to kiss our deposit goodbye if we don't have a resolution to this problem by the end of the week, which I don't think will happen. And that deposit is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of around 140,000 US dollars. That's business, right? That's, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's been, that's been weighing on me pretty heavily over the last couple of days because I found out about the update to the situation um, on uh, Tuesday, Tuesday morning, I guess. Sorry, I'm a little, saying it out loud makes it feel a little more real. My, my wife is not impressed um, with anything. She's not impressed with the situation. She's not impressed with my decision necessarily. I, I made the business case for why we should do it because ultimately what it comes down to is this is a project that we've invested already seven figures into with development costs, engineering, um, molds and other tooling costs, pre-production samples. Like this is already an, an, an enormous project for us because we're doing it at a scale that's very different from really anything else that we've ever done before. Like our order is going to be for 100,000 units. And so my justification to her was, look, and actually to the rest of the team, this is not a decision that I just go and, and make on my own because it, it affects everyone, right? Um, but I basically said, okay, look, we know that this manufacturer has no incentive whatsoever to produce our product. Why would they make our product when they can just make their product? Obviously, right? So based on that, we have no way of knowing when, if ever, they will produce our product because there's nothing in the contract that stipulates a drop dead delivery date. And the problem is that particularly lately, it's really easy to use COVID as an excuse for just about anything, right? Oh, well, why can't you get it? Oh, you know, COVID. Uh, okay, well, why are you delayed on this? Oh, well, you know, COVID, it's COVID times, right? 
And so it's been really easy to string us along, string us along and just not deliver. And so, so basically the contract doesn't have a drop dead date for delivery. And that means that they can drag it out for as long as they want. So if they, if they were to drag it out for another, let's say three months, right? If they dragged it out another three months, A, we have no recourse, and B, that is three months that we are not selling screwdrivers. And when you're ordering 100,000 screwdrivers, which is what we're doing, like we're betting really big on this. We think it's a great product. We think you guys are gonna love it. Um, you gotta kind of make tough decisions sometimes where you go, okay, 140 grand, that's a lot of money. But it's also $1.40 per screwdriver. Can I absorb $1.40 per screwdriver in the interest of actually having product to sell? So that's basically kind of kind of where we're at on this. I mean, we're we're lucky, right? Like we're 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 I don't think there's a word for it other than other than blessed, right? Like you guys are what make this possible. It's the it's the video business that gives us the ability to weather a storm that I think would sink a lot of other startups, right? I mean, you've seen it time and time again with things like Kickstarters, right? Where something unforeseen will happen, like a, a supplier will screw them over or it'll get delayed due to factors outside of their control and they go from, hey, we're definitely gonna deliver this thing to OMG, um, well, the ones with integrity anyway. OMG, we're gonna, we need to return everything, right? Like it's, it's tough. So we're, we're really lucky that we have you guys, um, you know, whether it's the supporters on Floatplane out there, whether it's um, those folks that are picking up the merch on lttstore.com, uh, anyone who just even watches the video, you know, that, that's a huge, huge factor for us. Just watch the video. Like we don't, we don't have a favorite way to support us really. It's just, uh, we just really appreciate y'all. So. Sorry, I realize I'm getting, I'm getting a little off topic. I'm getting a little sentimental here. I could talk about the computer. Uh, we went with the uh, Meshify C. And the reason we chose the Meshify C was at about 100 bucks. It's a really great value for a case that has solid cooling. So the entire front is mesh, hence the name. The top is mesh. The back is, well, it's not mesh, but it's you know honeycomb punch outs. So for a budget case, great cooling. And unlike the Meshify 2, it's quite affordable. So it's around $100, which we thought was a good fit for a system like this. Obviously, we could have spent less. You can always, you can always cheap out more on your case. And if the cooling's not good, hey, that's an easy fix. Oh, well, OK. Uh, fan filter for the bottom. Ah, there you go. Cooling. Right? Like if, you, <laughs> if you're really trying to save a buck, you know, you look at um, Scrapyard Wars, right? That series that we used to do back when you could buy hardware on the secondhand market affordably. You look at Scrapyard Wars, you know, we would almost never pay for a case if we could avoid it, right? Because all you need is to strap your, strap your parts into, uh, you know, an EMI safe enclosure. I mean, it's not even EMI safe if you're gonna <laughs> pop the side panels off. Okay, you need to strap them somewhere securely where your cat's not gonna knock it over. And, you know, that's all you really need, right? But I think most people, when they, when they you know, treat themselves, right? Treat themselves to a new gaming rig. They want, you know, they want something they can be proud of. They want something that looks decent. And I, I think the Mesh 5C is a pretty good balance there where, you're getting it for an affordable price, but you're also you know, building something that you can be proud of and something you can carry forward. That's another thing that I think people sometimes don't consider is it's really tempting to spend a ton of money, you know, buy a brand new CPU, brand new GPU, I mean, especially before, not so much these days, but it's really tempting to buy a brand new CPU, you know, get a ton of RAM, and then cheap out on something like a case. And Something that I think people sometimes forget about is that the depreciation on something like a CPU or a computer memory is often markedly higher 
than on something like a quality case. In fact, there are quality cases from many years ago that if kept in good condition can still hold their value very well today because fundamentally the standards have not really changed. We get new features. We get cable management holes that are better laid out for modern boards or we get front I.O. that's more up to date. But when it comes to quality construction, in some cases, you can find cases from 10, 15 years ago that are frankly built a lot better than the ones today. Mesh Vi C has some nice features, speaking of features. So we've got this little nubbin in the middle that makes it so that installing the motherboard vertically is super easy. You just basically pop it in there. And then between the kind of spring tension of the IO shield, which we installed earlier, and this nubbin, it'll just kind of sit there. Now, this is a really important sanity check that I, <laughs> I would say I always do, but no matter how many PCs I build, occasionally I'll forget to double check it, but you want to do a quick sanity check, make sure none of the little metal nubbins are sticking into any of your ports because that requires a full board removal and reinstall if you want to fix it properly. I've had situations where I was just building for myself and I did not feel like fixing it properly, so I've just taken a pair of side cutters, get in there and like rip out the tabs. <laughs> David, don't, don't say that like you've never done it. No, I was going to say we're like brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've done it. Oh, yeah, where can we find all these parts? So everything that we're building with today from Micro Center. In fact, I, oh, my phone's over there, but I had, uh, what's the, uh, what's the mesh if I see going for right now? 100 bucks. 100 bucks at Micro Center. 25 locations across the U.S. Good freaking stuff. We're using our 632 threaded screws here, getting this motherboard all screwed in. Uh, Floatplane wants me to remind, Floatplane, you know you guys pay me, not the other way around, right? Like, uh, you don't work for, for, for me, but they asked me to remind everyone that merch messages are a thing. So when we are live, if you go on lttstore.com and uh, place an order, there'll be a little message that comes up in the middle of the frame that'll show your message unless it's something that requires a uh, direct response or unless you write something inappropriate, in which case it will, it will not show up there. But that's what we do instead of Super Chats now because we really felt like Super Chats were not doing proper service to our audience. They're great in theory, right? They're a way for people to spend money so that they can have like a highlighted message and the creator can respond to them. But the problem is that so many would come in, especially ones that frankly were not <clears throat> quality, uh, that we can't acknowledge them all. And what's frustrating about that for me is it means that I really feel like I've, you know, I've let the audience down because you know, either it's something that's not entertaining for me to talk about on the stream or someone says something inappropriate, I can't acknowledge it. And then I feel like people have spent real actual money for nothing. So with merch messages, what's great about that is if for whatever reason I don't acknowledge your message, at least you get your LTT merch in the mail. <laughs> you know, a couple days later or a couple weeks later, depending where you happen to be in the world. So I don't have to, I don't have to sit and feel guilty if I don't manage to respond to every single one of them. I also feel like it's just better bang for the buck because then if we do acknowledge it, then it's effectively everything you would have gotten out of a super chat. Plus, we get the little image coming down on the screen. So if you wanted to do like a, you know, a hi mom because you think your mom watches LTT for whatever reason. Uh, if you wanted to do you know, a hi mom or whatever, then you can totally do that. Okay, let's get our power supply installed. This was really a budget. Um, a budget-driven decision. So we went with a G-Skill MB650B power supply. It ain't the most efficient thing. It don't have the most features. You know, you got a simple stamped steel uh, grill. You know, nothing, nothing really, nothing really outstanding. But what it is is decent power supply, and it's like 90 bucks. 80 plus bronze. Again, you know, nothing, nothing crazy in terms of efficiency. But it is semi-modular. Hold on, got that oriented wrong. So we're going to go ahead and install this. This is actually a feature that I really like, even though it can, whoops, add some finickiness to the installation processor, the processor, installation process, these little power supply frame pieces here. 
because what you're supposed to do is you're, you're supposed to not be a dum-dum. It makes it easy to slide the power supply in from the back, and it's a lot easier to do this if you just pull the whole thing out. Now, where's my lap? I need my laptop so I can, so I can talk to y'all. Actually, Ploof, are there any merch messages that I should be acknowledging? They bought something, but they didn't send a message. Oh, boy. Okay, we are actually working on uh, a way to make the merch message box a little bit more intuitive, but it's like in the checkout. We're working on a way to make it kind of stand out better. There we go. The fractal manager is watching? Oh, okay. Uh, they're going to be judging me. Oh, okay. Well, that's... Uh, that's a little uncomfortable. <laughs> One thing I would have liked, even on a budget power supply, is sleeved cables. But hopefully, we can cable manage it tightly enough that it's not really going to be a factor here. So you can see our pre-attached ones are your 24-pin power for the motherboard, as well as dual 8-pin CPU power connectors. This is something that's always been kind of confusing to me. If these wires can carry all the power that you need for two 8-pins or an 8 and a 4, See, you can break this one apart. Why don't you just do it all through the one? And I know, I know the answer. The answer is that the spec is that you can only put, I, I forget how many, is it like 150 watts or something like that? I, I forget what the actual number is, but the spec is that you can only put so much through one of these connections. But in that case, then, you should be running two separate wires. And there are cases where it can make a slight difference. So I think Gamers Nexus did a video where they measured the temperature of the wires running two separate connections to a GPU versus one daisy chain one. And it, it was lower if you run two separate ones. But it's also not going to light a fire in either case. So it seems like kind of just a, a minor thing. And clearly, everyone just treats it like it doesn't really matter. So wasn't really going anywhere with this, but let's get our 24 pin plugged in here. Oh man, this takes me back. The classic ketchup and mustard cable color. Look at that. I actually kind of like building basic machines because it just goes so fast. It's relatively simple. We've already got our CPU, our memory. Did I even talk about our memory? Oh man. Yeah, so we've got uh, 3600 C C18 uh, it's a dual 8 gig kit, so it runs in dual channel. It's from G Skill. It's their Rip Jaws V or Rip Jaws 5, whatever you prefer. Uh, these are XMP compatible modules, so if you want to do any overclocking, I think AMD calls it DOCP or whatever the case may be. Um, 3600 CL18, that's a really nice sweet spot to be for AMD. It's either that or like 3200 mega transfers per second with really low latencies. Do you want to do like a CL16, like CL14 kit or something like that? That's really the sweet spot for AMD builds. All right. I said we'd talk about this. To all the haters out there that are like, Ugh, why are they doing a build with the 6500 XT? The honest truth, okay? The deity's honest truth is that we planned to do this build, okay? We planned to do a build with Micro Center before we had our hands on this GPU, before we had tested it, before we had any opportunity to know how things were going to shake out. So we hedged our bets. We said, look, we, are, we got a hankering, right? Like, we're getting the shakes. We haven't done a budget build in over a year. We want to do a budget build. And they went, OK, well, we're Micro Center. We've got 25 locations with tens of thousands of products in stock and great prices. We got you covered. You want to do a budget build? And we went, well, yeah, but like GPUs. OK, maybe the 6500 XT will be our savior, we said. Maybe it will. Thankfully, we hedged our bets. So now is the part of this stream where you guys are going to decide, 
Do we stick with our 5600G with onboard graphics? We did choose a motherboard that <clears throat> has HDMI and DisplayPort out for our onboard GPU. Oh yeah, I guess we didn't really talk about the rest of the I.O. That's the nice thing about getting a nice mid-range board. You got that USB 10 gigabit per second, two and a half gig LAN, got that nice BIOS flashback. That's a really important feature for AMD boards. Just you never know, right? Like maybe you're selling it down the road and you sell the CPU first and you have a buyer who has a 2000 series chip or something like that. You want to make sure they want to test it, make sure it's compatible. Boom, BIOS flashback. Really, really nice feature to have. Um, so we went with a CPU that has a GPU on board just in case the 6500 XT turned out to be a turd and it did. So you guys are going to decide, do we go with the CPU? which has you know, seven CUs, like decent onboard graphics. We can, we can fire it up. We've got peripherals and a monitor and all that good stuff. Or do you want us to install our 6500 XT? And I'm going to grab my laptop. I'm going to go through the chat. But before I do that, I want to talk about some of the reasons that the 6500 XT is such a dog. So whether it was to save a buck or whether it was to make the card less appealing to miners, AMD equipped this bad boy with only four gigs of video memory and a 64-bit memory bus. 64-bit bus, to put that in perspective, I mean, what is that even comparable to? Like a GT 1030? Does a 1030 have a 64-bit bus? I think so. I mean, even going back many, many years, 64-bit memory bus is like the mark of a budget card, even going back like 10, 15 years. And a GPU needs high-speed memory. I mean, even budget GPUs need high-speed memory. NVIDIA famously has two versions of the GT 1030. They've got the GDDR5 version, I think it is, and then they've got one that's got like regular DDR4 on it or something like that. I, I can't remember exactly what two technologies they use, but one of them is has much slower RAM. And even with a basic GPU like a GT 1030, it makes an enormous difference. And effectively, equipping the card with a much narrower communication bus between the GPU and the memory, it's like equipping it with much slower or um, much crappier memory, essentially. Um, the good news is that you can actually buy them near MSRP. MSRP is $200, and unfortunately, you can't get them for $200. And they didn't even get reviewed well at $200 because the performance is not very good. But you can get them for $200 and change. And it is a dedicated GPU that you can actually buy brand new off the shelf. So that's sort of the glass half full. But unfortunately, we've got a bit of a configuration error in our system if we even wanted to get the most out of this thing because it's a PCIe Gen 4 GPU, which sounds like high technology. See, so look at this. Boom, ba -da! 1080p, full HD gaming, 4 gigs, GDDR6, 64-bit <clears throat> bus, <clears throat> PCIe 4.0. But the problem is that you really got to dig into the uh, fine print here to find uh, where they crippled that 4.0 interface. OK, no, PCIe 4.0 support, mm -mm, so it's not there. Uh, minimum system requirements, PCI Express compatible motherboard with one x16 PCIe slot. Nope, they didn't disclose it there. In fact, they just don't even mention that that PCIe 4.0 interface is only, is it by 8 or by 4? I'm checking, but it is a 64-bit on the 1030. Yeah, the 1030 is 64-bit. Uh, I can't remember, actually, if it's uh, by 4 or by 8. Hold on. I can probably tell by popping this out. Quick, blue. I think it's by 4. So let's talk again about wider communication buses. I, I get a kick out of this. Even on the card itself, physically, it's like kind of deceptive. Hold on. Ah! Get by four. Yeah, that's right. OK. Ah! Come on! Get out of there. OK. Even the card itself is quite deceptive. There's no way, as an average consumer, that you could know that this 16x interface here with all of these connections. You see all that? There you go. This is the only way you can tell. David, can you get close enough to see that on the board, on the PCB, only these ones are actually connected to anything? Mm -hmm. 
and the rest of it's just blank? Mm -hmm. That's right. It's PCIe Gen 4, GDDR6, but it has a PCIe Gen 4 by 4 interface. The standard for GPUs is by 16. And PCI Express bandwidth scales linearly with the number of lanes. So Gen 4 means double the bandwidth of Gen 3, which is double the bandwidth of Gen 2. But the problem with that is that if you only have four of those Gen 4 lanes compared to if you had 16 Gen 2 lanes, they're now equivalent. So this essentially has a PCI Express Gen 2 by 16 interface. You could think of it that way. But it's even worse than that. Because if it had a PCI Express Gen 2 by 16 interface, then it would operate at full speed in this motherboard with this CPU. Unfortunately, this CPU only supports PCI Express Gen 3. And that's true of most budget CPUs that are in the kinds of systems that people would build around something like a 5600 XT. Actually, AMD doesn't even list PCI. This is why this is so confusing for consumers. They don't even list what generation of PCIe and how many lanes on the box, because I, you know, it'd be a shame to scare people away with too many actual meaningful specs, right? You don't want to confuse the customer. Um, so if it had, a Gen 2 by 16 slot on the card, this CPU would be able to communicate at full speed. But because this CPU only supports Gen 3 and there's only four lanes, now instead of Gen 4 by 4, right, we're running at Gen 3 by 4 because all those other pins are not freaking connected. So this is the same if you plug it into a budget system. This is the same as connecting your GPU on PCI Express Gen 2 by 8. OK, for those of you who like didn't follow all the doubling and halving of, of bandwidth and all of that stuff, that's the like <gasps> moment. Because basically, if you plug this card into the kind of system that we would expect it to be plugged into, it has 1 8th of the interface bandwidth that an, a modern GPU would have. One eighth. That's bad. Now, if you plug it into a super modern system because you're just using it as a stopgap solution while you, you know, optimistically wait for some better GPU to come down in price, you know what? Yeah, uh, fair enough. It might, be, it might be better than what you can get an older scalped GPU for, quite honestly. I, I haven't looked at the used market super closely in the last couple of days. I find it, frankly, kind of depressing. So I don't look at it every day. It's only really when we do a video that's really focused on that. And Anthony was the one who did all the prep for 6500 XT, so I had no reason to really look at it yesterday. Um, so it's possible that it could be a better deal than whatever you could find used, especially because you know it comes with a warranty and all that good stuff. But if you're buying it, just to just to use to have and to hold man it's tough it's tough to recommend so we're putting it in but i need to pull right i said i'd pull out the chat and let you guys ultimately decide what you want to see do we just stick with onboard graphics do we try to wait out these scalper bastards or do we go with the gpu how you guys how you guys doing hey guys i'm you know what i'm going to i'm going to put the chat right here I'm going to put chat right here while we go ahead and cable manage this bad boy. Uh, what else is there for us to put in here? Is that, is that it? Did we build the whole system already? Put that GPU in there? Is that it? Oh, yeah, I guess I can... Uh, oh, hold on a second. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. Let's talk about, talk about Micro Center some more. Uh, are you doing the thing? All right, thanks Micro Center for sponsoring today's stream. The Micro Center community is a great place to go to get tech advice from other enthusiasts. You can check out the Micro Center Custom Builds Showcase and some of the latest builds, such as the Build of the Week from last week and the Build of the Year from 2021. Man, Build of the Year 2021, that's, uh, whew, that's a low bar. While you're there, submit your build to the showcase as well to become eligible for the next Build of the Week. Each week, the winner will have their post promoted on Micro Center social media accounts and receive a free exclusive Micro Center community t-shirt. Every build approved to the showcase will also be sent a Micro Center coupon. All right, 
cool stuff. Freaking love it. And of course, they're offering a free 240 gig SSD, no purchase necessary, to new customers in store only. So that promo has actually been running for quite some time. Those guys are tough to compete with, I tell you that. I was, I was glad back when I was working at NCIX, we were always very grateful that Micro Center did not exist north of the border because we would look at the kind of crazy stuff they would do back then. One of their big shticks back in the day was they would just beat the crap out of whatever the hot Intel CPU was of the day, like they'd just sell it like way below cost as, as a way to get people to, to come through the door. And we were just looking at it going, on the one hand, we feel like we have to respond to this because it generates a ton of complaints for us that, you know, oh, NCIX is so overpriced. In the US, you could get the CPU for this much at Micro Center, but you know, we know what their cost is and we know that they're just selling it like, $80 below cost, like we don't, we can't, we can't compete with that. Um, so they've always just had kind of these crazy, these crazy promos. And uh, I, I mean, hey, they outlasted their competition. They outlasted Fry's, <clears throat> outlasted NCIX. So <laughs> clearly they're making it work for them. But I was just always very grateful as a product manager that I didn't have to beat their promos. <laughs> Uh, all right, how you guys doing, chat? Hey, the electric the Electro Classic says hi, float plane. Heck yeah, hi, Electro Classic. Uh, is it okay that they see the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's okay if they see the screen. I mean, if they're yeah, it's oh, just okay. it's just all the chats. I uh, got the got the dashboard up there. No, no, the laptop's not gonna fall, guys. It's all good. Don't you even worry about a thing. I would never drop my framework laptop. Okay, what is happening here? Oh wow, I wait what? Okay. Hey trying to feed these front panel connector wires. Man, it's nice what you can get in a budget case these days. Like cable management in this thing? Yeah, okay, the GPU, that's pretty tough. But that comes more down to the fact that this particular GPU has the power connector right here in the middle because it's got a, a donger extension cooler on it. Actually, I haven't used that term in a long time. I coined it back in the, I think, uh, GTX 600 series days when NVIDIA did that card that had a super short PCB, like they did a, a reference card, or I guess we call it a founder's card now, but they did a reference card back then that had this like plastic extension to make it look like a real man's GPU. But actually it was like a little, a little tiny thing like this, and it was just like plastic at the end. And I kind of went, hey, all the cooling and all the card is here. You could have just made it shorter and then it would be, Really great for small form factor builds. Um, but I can see how, from a customer perception standpoint, seeming budget like that might not be desirable. So I guess they decided to go the other route. So we're back to that again. If you look closely at this thing, at the back of it instead of at the front of it, you can see that actually, you know what? It has cooling over here. Not that it probably needs it. It has cooling over here. but. The PCB only actually goes up to here, so that's why the power connector has to be has to be there. All right, I'm just plugging in the front panel connectors here. Got always remember positive on the left, and um, power LED is almost always on the same plane as the power switch. That's some of the easy little rules of thumb that I can remember. Most modern decent boards like this one have the the key for it silk screened onto the board, so you don't even have to pull out the manual, which is really nice. Look at that. I mean, that's not bad in terms of, oh man, this is really awful. Okay. <laughs> Look, I'm trying here. Should I just go get a cable mod extension or something? <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, extension. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's okay. It's just yet another reason for us to just pull this horrible, horrible GPU out. Uh, Daned33 asks, LTT store panties when? Okay. I had a meeting with the merch team yesterday, okay? Meeting with the merch team yesterday, I was talking with our resident uh, panty experts who are, well, look, what do you want from me? They're the, fa they're the fashion and graphic design team, okay? It was kind of a funny meeting, I guess, because I had to ask a lot of questions that are frankly things I've just never really thought about, not because I'm like trying to pry, but just because I do need to know the answers to these questions in order for us to make good product development decisions. I was like, so are these kinds of underwear comfortable? Or, you know, like, are these, are these popular? Do people want, uh, 
Do people want a bra that doesn't have a, a wire? Do, 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 is, is that okay? And it's just like, can I ask these questions? This is not, this is not an HR issue, right? <laughs> just like, ah, uh, how do you navigate that sort of thing? Anyway, we made it through it. And uh, Bridget and Sarah each put together designs that, quite frankly, um, we're going to go from making no women's underwear to making maybe too many women's underwear because they ended up both putting together designs that they asked me to pick between. Oh, OK. Hi, guys. Uh, Chase, can you zoom out on the overhead? Uh, you know what? I'm just going to be unboxing these. I'm going to be unboxing these peripherals right now anyway. So let's get our keyboard. This is a $30 Aki keyboard, which has their red mechanical switches. Uh, we don't know if it's amazing or anything, but we picked it up because it seemed like pretty good price for mechanical switch keyboard, 30 bucks. I mean, it's, it's, there's some deck flex, but not the end of the world. For our mouse, no compromises. Man, if you're a gamer, uh, you, you can get away with a cheap keyboard as long as it has a decent number of key rollover. You cannot get away with a cheap mouse if you want to get past a certain point. So inspired by our recent video talking about why the chuffin' heck everybody keeps buying this mouse, we've gone with the G502 Hero. This thing really is outstanding. It's a great mouse even at its original MSRP. And now it's even better because you can get this bad boy for like, Micro Center has it for what, 50 bucks for the Hero Edition here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get that plugged in. Am I back on the, on the ACAM? Not yet? That's fine because I've got a monitor to unbox as well. Oh, right. What I was going to say was if anyone from the merch team is watching, uh, Nick, like if, if you're watching, uh, maybe if those guys could get, uh, get Chase. Chase and undisclosed probationary employee number three. If you guys could get them the mock-ups for the, for the two underwear designs, that would be super cool. And then we could show them on stream. If you guys want to just send that over. Hopefully someone's watching. Otherwise, uh, Ploof, do you want to send them a quick Teams message? All right, awesome. Where did this garbage can go? This is, this is frustrating me. I need my garbage can. Yeah, whenever people move the garbage can that's under the build corner desk, I get very trays upset. It's under you right now. Is it? Oh, fantastic. Look at that. Now I can dispose of my garbage things. Thanks, professional input number three. Yeah, I appreciate that. All right, and I just realized now I forgot to plug in the front panel audio, and I haven't plugged in the fans yet either, so I went ahead and did that. Let's get our monitor opened up. Oh, this bad boy right here. MSI Optics G241. So our rationale here was we were looking for something affordable, but still with you know justifiability as a as a as a gaming display. So it's 144 hertz, 1080p, one millisecond response times. I believe. Oh, hold on. Oh, there's your problem. I hate this style of box. Uh, which camera are we on right now? They're on me. They're on you. Oh, OK. Um, ow. I hate this style of box where the, the handles, they get punched in when you grab them, and then they lock in the, the item. <laughs> Come on, I can't get it open. <laughs> Do you see the problem here? Like it, it punches in the thing, and then you can see when I try to lift it, it gets stuck on the on the little cardboard tab. Ow! My finger! There we go. Okay. Looks like they thought of that. It's got a little, it's got a little punch out in the bottom there. All right, should be able to get this open. I believe this has an IPS type panel, so you're not going all the way back to the Stone Age in terms of panel technology. Let's go ahead and get this baby opened up. Actually, you know what? I'm going to recruit one of my special helpers to assemble the monitor for me while I go ahead and plug in the fans. Mm -hmm. do, you, uh, do you think I could get a special helper over here? Um, oh, you want to get the, the bra and panties up on the stream. Priorities. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Oh, did Sarah send them over? Yeah. Nice. What a champion she is. Absolute champion. You know what? 
maybe we'll have to let you guys weigh in. So if you wear, if you wear like women's style um, underwear, or if you know someone who wears women's style underwear, maybe what you could do is get those people in front of the stream because we really do need the community's feedback on this one. Like I was saying before, honestly, Bridget and Sarah both brought such strong designs to the table that it's, I think, impossible for us to pick just one. I think we kind of have to do both of them, but we also have to limit our exposure, haha, <laughs> pun intended, on this product because we don't know how well it's going to sell and we can't just go to market with, you know, all the dozen different freaking styles of underwear with all the different, you know, amounts of of butt they show or whatever else. Like I we can't just do everything all at once. So we need you guys to tell us, "Hey, what should our priority be? Um, let me know when you guys have, have got that up. I can, uh, okay, how's this go on here? Uh-oh, where's my screws at? Okay, here we go. So some assembly required. It's always kind of fun to me to see what the manufacturing date was on, on hardware that I buy from the store or comes from the store. Uh, this particular monitor made in 2021 September. So that gives you an idea of how long it takes to go from factory to C shipment to MSI's warehouse to their partner to your door. And it turns out the answer is about two to three months or three to four months, I guess. That would work out too. Hey, there they are. Okay. So according to Bridget and Sarah, oh, they're gone. No, no, they're, 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 they're still there. According to Bridget and Sarah, these two styles of tops and bottoms are quite popular right now. We don't want to try and tackle the legitimate engineering challenges associated with doing something like a, a, a wire bra or anything like that. That's, that's, that's a project for another time. Um, but we've got, the prism, I call it prism. I don't remember what Bridget called it, but it's kind of like an RGB inspired design on the left there. And then we've got, I don't know what to call this other than like underwear party. Um, <laughs> but Sarah's design is the one on the right. And then they told me, okay, scoop neck, a scoop net bralette and then a triangle bralette are super popular. And they said, hey, look, if we're just gonna do one, we should probably do the boy shorts for the bottoms. Um, but then, so the thing is like, you know, for me, these are not products that I use personally. So I just, I have to just ask people awkward questions, right? So I was talking to my wife about it, really anyone who will, who will listen and who I think it would be appropriate to ask. Um, so I was talking to my wife about it and she kind of goes, look, I have no interest in the boy shorts whatsoever. I would really like for there to be a bikini bottom. And so I feel like we're going to kind of have to do both, but what I want to know is, how heavily should we skew one way or the other when we place our order? And what do you guys think in terms of designs? Would you go for, like, I would imagine the, the, like the tech you know, party underwear on the right, I would imagine that more in like a boy short versus a bikini bottom. Like I'm, I'm kind of lounging around the house, I guess. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. This is one of those situations where I'm speaking entirely from, from ignorance and I just have to, I got to own that and I just got to listen to what, what the people who know tell me. All right, plugging in DisplayPort here. And then I want to have a look at the chat real quick. Actually, I got to get my, I got to get my fans plugged in as well. That's the last thing left there. All right, coming back around. Uh, a couple questions from Merch Mess. Okay, I'm going to have to wait for a sec. Um, Suit says, my wife hates boy shorts. Uh, Lisa Miza says, uh, bikini. Yep. Satrantha, holy, a word that I don't say on stream. I would 100% uh, go underwear party, would prefer scoop bralette, bikini bottom. See, that was another thing that I asked. I was like, okay, so. Uh, I know that mixing and matching with, uh, with bathing suits is a thing, 
but would we would we be expected? Oh, they're not there anymore. But would we be expected to sell sets of these, or would we expect people to mix and match both the patterns and the styles? And Sarah and Bridget both were immediately like, "Oh, 100% mix and match." And I go, "Oh shoot, okay. So now we have to figure out like a new picking and packing process for these, so that people can kind of customize their their package, so to speak." And yeah, there's, there's definitely going to be challenges. Uh, has our RL says boy shorts. Um, what else we got here? Oh, man. Yeah, mix and match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hear you guys, mix and match. Well, the thing is, we don't want to sell them individually, like just individually, individually, because we're not Amazon, right? Like we, we have significant picking and packing costs associated with an order. So we would never expect someone to order a single pair of underwear from us because by the time we pay our overhead fees, it's just not going to be competitive, right? Like it's going to cost way too much. So we want to bundle things together to make it a, a more worthwhile value, to make it not a waste of everyone's time, right? But what we want to figure out is how you can choose your own bundle. So maybe we could just make it like, oh man, I wonder if we could do something as... We could do a top and a bottom for X price. We could do two tops, two bottoms for X price. We could do something like any two items or any three items for X price. There's lots of different ways that we can that we can sort of tackle it. Bikini in both for pad wearers. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Uh, imagine um, said the only thing she would wear, if any, was top left. Okay. So prefer the RGB slash prism design in the uh, triangle triangle cut. Uh, Bryce OG86 asks, could you do like a men's style and a women's style in the same sort of pattern as a combo? I think that is absolutely something that we should do. I don't know if that's the first thing we want to do, but uh, yeah, it's tough, right? Because we have no freaking idea how these are going to sell. Uh, according to Google, our audience is 2% or less than 2% female. But here's the problem with that, right? A, they're guessing a lot of the time. And I think that um, machine learning algorithms are not necessarily the greatest in terms of uh, inclusivity. Uh, I think that they make a lot of assumptions. I think they are prejudiced, essentially. So I think that uh, just an interest in tech could get someone flagged as you know male age whatever in my analytics dashboard, but that might not actually be what they are, right? So that's one problem. Another problem with just trusting the analytics is that we get a ton of feedback from people like, hey, my wife and I, my girlfriend and I watch the WAN show every week. My boyfriend and I, my husband and I, we watch the WAN show together every week. Well, what account are you logged into, right? So just because, did this turn off? Why is this off? Yeah, there you go. Just because that view counted as a, a, a male ages 18 to 35 view doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only person who was watching. So those are the challenges that we have. We, we just have Google's sort of uh, prejudiced guesswork. And that's about it, because we've never really done like a, uh, uh, we don't really have even a scientific way to pull our audience. Now, um, is this broken? <laughs> Hold on, boot VG. Oh, that's hilarious. It seems to be stalled on GPU initialization. Ow, ooh, yeah, I'm good. Oh, I just, um, oh, right in the funny bone, I, I was, Oh, I was, try I was trying to reach back and grab my screwdriver. OK, we're just going to give this the old, did you try turning it off and turning it back on again? Dane32 says, thanks for the update. Wifey approves. Hey, no problem. Uh, the Millen says, you have to take into account people like me who will buy gifts for their wife. You know what? That's actually something that we have thought about quite a bit, is we want LTT to be a clothing brand, not just 
merch for people who watch the channel. And so one of the things that we're trying to do is make sure that everything's super high quality so that people just inherently trust it. So that you buy you know, men's underwear for yourself and you kind of go, hey, I want to get a gift for someone. That seems like a really cool design. You know what, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get them because I know they'll be like good. So we are accounting for that there could be a fair amount of gift. Are you serious right now? This has now gone from a no post situation to a no power on whatsoever situation. Is our 6500 XT more than just a bad value? <laughs> Is it actually causing our system not to boot up? How funny would that be? I mean, it's not really that funny. Uh, okay. Rich77 says, here's the problem with buying underwear for your lady. You would have to ask her size, not an option. Two, you need to snoop to find her size, not better. I would say that if you are in a relationship where you can't open someone's underwear drawer, you guys got some, you guys got some secrets. Um, I, I, I can tell you that not everybody is in the same situation as you, Rich77. I, I, can, I, can, I mean, I do the laundry in our house. There, volunteer to do the laundry. Boom, easy. Oh boy, our 6500 XT might be dead. How funny is that? I mean, I'm glad the system is um, posted now. That's the good news. That's the reassuring part. Uh, the part. Yeah. Uh, huh. This is this is a this is a challenge. Uh, it's okay, David. You don't have to hold that thing up so high. You can. I'll just be back here for a second. I just want to get the Ethernet plugged in and uh, keyboard and mouse plugged in and all that good stuff. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Let's turn it off. Let's plug the GPU back in and see if. <laughs> oh man, chat loves this. Yeah, that GPU was stillborn anyway. Yeah. I know, but come on, I'm trying to give it a I'm trying to give it a chance here, guys. At least it's a GPU. Okay, fine. Fine. From the tech enthusiast standpoint, okay? Like you guys, me, right? Hey, if AMD's um, maybe not deceptive, but certainly omissive marketing practices here work, and other less tech savvy people go out and buy this thing, that's one more GPU for us. Down. Well, there's the uh, look, David. I am trying to find a silver lining here. Okay, is that not a silver lining? I didn't say it was a, you know, um, lawful good silver lining. Okay, I just, it's, I just said it's a silver lining. Okay. Oh. Bad Linus. Look, I know, but what do you guys want from me? <laughs> Look, I'm live, so I can't take it back, which means that if the internet has taught me anything, it's time to double down. <laughs> Matt, has anyone done that as a webcomic yet? Like, double down, man. <laughs> he says awful things, and when he's called on it, he doesn't take it back. He doubles down. That's his superpower. The only, uh, yeah, that's just not a very remarkable superpower. Thing for you. It's a super normal, normal Windows superpower. Media creation tool. You're gonna need that. Windows Media Creation Tool. Oh, did we not put Windows on the drive? Did we? Did we do a? Did we do a little oopsie? Um, well, what I would actually prefer then is, can I just have the uh, the drive from my test bench upstairs, please? Sure, I'll go grab it. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's just on the desk behind my desk. I mean, that's fine because I have to troubleshoot this GPU right now anyway. This is ridiculous. Okay, so did I? Oh, sorry about that, David. Okay. Here you go. Uh, so did I maybe plug this into the wrong spot or something? Like maybe it's not getting power. Why don't we just see if maybe we've got uh, a power supply or a, maybe it's a cabling issue. Maybe these are not all plugged in or something. No, that looks fine. Okay. So there's two. There's two different plugs for it. Maybe we could just try this one. Let's just see if maybe that'll that'll wake it up. Oh, are people suggesting side sidekick? Yeah, kid hindsight. Yeah, that would be a good sidekick. Uh, a person who would bet on everything. Uh, Borderlands had a DLC side quest that was a person who would bet on everything and double down on everything. Yeah, okay, that sounds pretty good. Hey, look at that! 
Okay, I don't know what happened there, but when in doubt, turn it off, turn it back on, unplug it, plug it back in. Colin's, Colin's, grabbing, the, Colin's grabbing the boot drive. That sounds fantastic. Let's jump into the BIOS, make sure that we can actually enable DOCP, get our memory profile running correctly, because otherwise we're going to be stuck at DDR4-2133, which especially if we were using onboard graphics would be a super, super, super bad time. Um, do, 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 do. You really want to... You really want to maximize your memory frequency. What am I even doing? There we go. You really want to maximize your memory frequency if you're using onboard graphics, which is one of those really like, like I don't know what to call it, catch-22 type things. It's like you don't have money, so you need to go for onboard graphics. But the best way to get onboard graphics is to spend, or the best way to enjoy your onboard graphics is to spend more money. It's like, so the answer is spend more money no matter what you do. It's just frustrating, right? Like, I, I understand the technology reasons why there's nothing they can do about that. It's not a conspiracy. It's just frustrating. So our suggestion for the build, thanks, Colin, is still, oh, is this my boot drive? It was on your test bench. This was on my test bench. Yeah, oh, boy. Well, I have, uh, <clears throat> I have no idea what this is. I was expecting it to be a Sabrent drive. Um, uh, uh, you know what, let me try this one first. Maybe it has Windows on it. So our recommendation for the build is still the 660p. It's got a DRAM cache, it's well priced, 90 bucks for a terabyte, but Crucial P5, hey, not a bad way to go either. And we've upgraded to two terabytes, which does put us over our, our $1,000 total budget. That was $1,000 including all of our peripherals, which we thought was kind of a nice place to be given that you haven't been able to get any kind of, you know, you haven't been able to get a GPU for under $1,000 for the last freaking year. Um, hold on, I need to just, come on, come on, GPU. Okay, there we go. All right, let's try, let's try this. Let's see if we have Windows on here. We're gonna, we're gonna play a game that we play all the time called, is this my test bench drive? In the writing team, we just, yeah, we, we tend to be a little bit lazy sometimes. If all you need to do is just, you know, boot it up on stream and show it, if you're not doing any kind of serious benchmarking. What fresh install? What fresh install? Come on. 1250 with the monitor and everything. Sorry, I'm sorry, I was I was under that. So it's under a thousand, including GPU. Right, that was the that was the difference. So it's like 700 something uh, without the GPU, under a thousand with the GPU, and then about 1200 with the monitor, keyboard, mouse, mechanical switches. This is from Aki, and we've got our uh, G502 Hero. Okay, well it does have an OS, but it is not Windows. Uh, okay, or, I mean, alternately, you can just come entertain the people and I can go try and find it. That's uh, another option. Unless I put it in my backpack. And you have to do a physical thing because you have no mic. Dance. I used to keep it in. Dance. I used to, oh no, it's not in here. Hold on, hold on, no, no, I got this. Maybe I, maybe I have one. Ah, I used to keep one in my backpack all the time. <laughs> You know what? Okay. Entertain the people. Oh, do the merch messages. There's a mic there. Just stand there. They're going to be able to totally hear me just like running. I was running. <laughs> oh, shoot. Um, there it is. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, I might. Hi. Uh, yeah, you know what drive this is? This is my gaming on Linux drive. I brought it into work to get some screen cap for the uh, part four video or something like that. So technically, you know what, yeah, why didn't that boot? Hold on a second. Let's give it one more chance. Let's give it one more chance. Maybe we'll game on frickin' Linux here. Well, what, right? And worst case scenario, I did find my regular test bench boot drive, so we got that as well on my Sabrin drive. That's why I was saying, oh, uh, this isn't one I'd wanna recommend for this build. It's like a Gen 4 drive. It's a good, good drive. It just <laughs> costs more than GPU. <laughs> uh, okay. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know how well, um, 
I don't know how well it's going to handle just completely changing out the hardware and trying to boot it. Uh, Windows doesn't always handle this very well. And Linux, yeah, better in a lot of ways, but I just literally do not know how it handles stuff like this. I guess the answer is not today. That's fine. That's fine. We'll throw on the other drive. Uh, do you want to actually th throw me that laptop if there's any other merch messages that I should talk about? All right, hit me. Oh, the mic wasn't on? Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, man. All right, cool. Uh, so for stuff like Hi Mom, oh, this is all pushed to stream. Wait, these are all pushed to stream. You didn't curate any of them. Oh, okay. Well, then there's nothing that I really have to respond to. Then is there? Oh, I see. Uh, okay. So uh, yes, uh, for questions that come in, you want to press curate. Oh, right. Sorry. Ideally, yep, yep. That's fine because that way I because I'm live and I can't. Uh, I can't brain noodle. I can't read okay. while I'm trying to entertain the people. OK, I'm on a 12900K X690 DDR4 motherboard uh, and 3070 Ti. My question is, should I get faster memory? 3600 megahertz C18. Um, no, no, I probably, wouldn't, I probably wouldn't spend more money on that system. I think what you need to do is you need to buy more video games and play them. I mean, honestly, I've been stuck in that trap so many times myself where I end up just playing with my computer instead of playing on my computer. Does that kind of make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes we just we get really we get really passionate about the machine. You know, we want to cable manage it, we want to put lighting in it, we want to we want to optimize it, you know, overclock it. And it's like, hey, remember why you got into this in the first place? Enjoy your games. You know? Go go pick up go pick up some 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 indie some fun indie games on Steam. Just like Try them out. Support some indie devs. Uh, just yeah, just play them. Uh, do you mind looking away while I type in this password? Oh well, no, wait, maybe don't swing it around. Oh poor. Okay, hope nobody gets motion sick. <laughs> okay, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. You could just you could just glance up would be fine <laughs> for next time. <laughs> I don't know. Where does action stream? <laughs> okay. Oh man. Okay. Cool. Um, uh, can I just say that I, I love and appreciate all of you guys? <laughs> we got we got the no windows. We got the uh, we got the trying to make all of our viewers throw up. But you guys wouldn't have it any other way, and I know that for a fact. That you guys love us for us. <laughs> oh, float plane chat. I thought the computer was the game. PC building simulator. Yeah, I know, guys. Wait, how is it? Huh, do I already have like chipset drivers and everything for, for AMD installed on this system? Hey, that's freaking awesome. Wow, I have a really clean bench drive. Go Linus. OK, so the only thing that I need then is uh, I need the game drive. Ploof, can I have the, uh, the game USB? You know the one I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, in the writer's area. So we just have a drive that just has a bunch of games installed. It's USB C. This is a 10 gigabit USB 3 motherboard, so it should be fine. Uh, Dylan says, any chance to have an update on the backpack? Super excited about it. Also, love the color scheme on the pillow. Just picked up an expensive edition pillow. Yeah, that's right. We mad lads actually freaking did it. We did an all alpaca wool. We did an all alpaca wool version of our pillow. I, I don't recommend it. To be clear, this is absolutely a status item, not a practical item in any way, shape, or form. But it's selling spectacularly well. We've already moved through over a third of them, and we're we're not going to restock it. It's not the kind of thing that I would expect people to continue to to buy on an ongoing basis. It's just one of those things where, hey, if you want to if you want to really flex for the people who are in the know, then you'll have one. And other than that, we're not gonna we're not gonna try to push our luck on it. All right, let's plug that baby in. As for the backpack, honestly, I don't really have any updates other than that we're waiting for another sample that has some tweaks to the pocket layout. I'm still extremely pleased with just the quality and comfort of the bag, so it'll, it'll come when it comes. Between the backpack and the screwdriver, I had a funny conversation with Kyle, one of the engineers in Creator Warehouse, um, with Kyle and Nick, where we were talking about, hey, what do we do about this issue? If you weren't on the stream earlier, you'll want to rewind and check out that story, because it's basically about how the screwdriver just cost me another $140,000. US um, So we were having a conversation that went, OK, look, what if we place an order with the alternate factory 
like place another bulk order with the alternate factory, knowing that the original factory is going to drag their butts, and then we'll just order 200,000 screwdrivers. And I kind of, I had one of my like, oh, oh, just, oh, lay on the floor moments, because I was like, look, guys, I do not have another $3 million to order another, you know, however many screwdrivers. Like, that's what we've got deployed overall on the first, actually, no, that's not even all of it, because that doesn't include um, any of the amortized, like any of the costs that need to be amortized, like the molding and tooling. Oh, man. So yeah, I, anyway, I was like, look, literally all the cash and credit, everything that I have is deployed right now on screwdriver and backpack. That's it. I actually have like nothing. Don't worry, paychecks are still fine. Like we have operating cash. <laughs> it's just whenever I say stuff like that, it's like, no, no, it's fine. Um, we've never been laid on a paycheck, not once. But <laughs> people are getting paid. Yeah. Chase, I don't think you would have stuck around this long just for Intel Extreme Tech upgrade. <laughs> that, that was all we ever. And that and that dashing hoodie lanyard and uh, and toque combo over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah, cash flow tech tips. And screwdrivers are solid in a heartbeat. I, I don't know, guys, right? Because it's something we've never done before. Like, I think it's great. You know, you got the got the nice ratchet. You got the the knurling. You got the black bits. You got the sweet bit holder system. You know, I, I think the ergonomics are freaking awesome. Um, oh, oh, oh. Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm re you ready. I'm gonna leak something. And we're going to do something really cool. We've actually been working with like a uh, like a small batch injection molding place to do. Uh, see this ring in here? It's a little Delrin ring that sits between the uh, the ratchet selector and the handle. Um, super super little tiny thing there. So it's made of Delrin and it's black on the standard one, and it's to kind of match the finish of the shaft. But we are working with a like a small run injection molding place to do colored rings and colored caps. And we're going to do a white internal for many of your favorite influencers. So if your name is, say, Steve from Gamers Nexus or Justine from iJustine, um, if your name is something along those lines, it is very likely that in the mail, around the time of launch, you are going to be getting a customized with your colors version of the screwdriver. So uh, unfortunately, there's, I, I, we don't actually have plans to sell those. So it's more just like a cool thing to do for like our, our buds in the industry. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. And the reason it's top of mind is because Sarah showed me the packaging design for it on Tuesday. And it's going to be. Uh, uh, yes, Bitwit will be getting one. Um, so it's going to come with like a like a double sized box, and then it'll have both versions. So they'll get the the standard one, and then it'll have the customized like them edition one. It's still going to be LTT on the handle because uh, yeah, it was going to be a lot of a lot of challenges to, <laughs> to make sure that we got everyone's like logos perfectly like that. Do you mind just tilting up just a touch while I type? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, we're good. <laughs> David, <laughs> David, come back. <laughs> but we're, yeah, we're really excited. And no, no, it's not just marketing for LTT store, Aku Inu, or whatever your name is, because there's no obligation. We're just going to send it to them. They don't have to do anything. They can just use it, or they can give it away, or they can throw it away. Um, it's just something we, we think it's a really great screwdriver, and we want to send it to people. Uh, obviously, if they talk about it, yeah, that'd be, that'd be swell. But we, we don't want that anyone to feel like there's any pressure or anything like that. That would be horrible. I, I hate it when people do that to me, honestly. Like, it's, it's quite frustrating. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think uh, Zach from uh, Jerry Rig Everything handled it absolutely perfectly. He reached out to me the other day. He's got a knife. Um, so get, you guys are going to want to check that out. I actually disclosed him. I was like, look, uh, Zach, this is a little awkward. Like, we're going to do a knife at some point. But um, it's not really on the immediate roadmap. So, if you do want to send it over, I'd be super happy to rep your knife. But at some point, we're going to be bitter rivals. <laughs> and he goes, uh, you know what? I think, I'll, I think I'll run that risk. And so he, he's sending over a couple. So we'll have it on short circuit. We'll be able to use the official Jerry Rig Everything knife. 
Uh, you guys are going to want to go check out check that out. But I just thought the way that he handled it was super classy. He just reached out to me, said, "Hey, you know, are you are you interested?" So he's actually doing it like better than us, I guess, because I was just going to send it to people, um, and I'm still going to do that because <laughs> we've already done all the injection molding and it was expensive. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I. It's, it, it can be frustrating when there's some kind of, when it feels like there's some kind of obligation. So I want to say explicitly there, there is none. Now, why is my game drive not showing up? That's a bit of a downer. Uh, don't, don't worry, don't worry, David. You don't have to follow me over here like that. I'm just going to see if maybe it's this USB cable. I keep a USB Type A to Type C in my bag um, just in case. So we're going to try plugging into the 10 gig Type A port. Just love that Type A connector. It's like, how have we not managed to build a better connector than USB Type A? It's just so robust. And it works. L would you look at that? Did this just pick up that Steam library, like, automagically? That is super cool. Immediately, we have a bunch of games installed. Freaking love it. Let's head straight to Doom Eternal, because that's how I'm feeling right now. Doom. All right. Um. I'm such a huge screwdriver. I'm going to buy one of your fans. Hey, got him. Thanks for that. <laughs> Have you seen the new Steam interface for moving games between drives? I haven't. I did notice they redid the, uh, they, they redid the game library drive interface, but I had not seen just a, a new tool for that. That's pretty cool. What else is going on? Head-to-head uh, -head Linus. Head to head. What are people talking about head to head? OK. I don't know what they're talking about. Might be a jerry rig everything. I feel like your jerry rig everything knife will be higher quality. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen his yet. I'm actually super excited to check it out. Do you regularly update the games on your test drives to make sure they'll be able to boot? Um, I think you see the answer to that. <laughs> the answer is a big fat no. That, that's, a, that, that's a negatory. Oh, the APU versus the GPU head to head. OK. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's play some Doom Eternal, get it kind of dialed in. Then we're going to rip out the 6500 XT, this poor, poor bottlenecked 6500 XT. And we're going to run off of our onboard GPU. Actually, let's fire up hardware info, and I can confirm for you guys that even though the GPU is in the top slot here, let's just find it. Oh, yeah. Navi24 from XFX. Uh, wait. Does this chip support PCIe Gen 4? I guess it does. I thought it was Gen 2, but I'll check. OK. So never mind. We're good. I hadn't looked that closely into the current gen APUs. The last time we did a video about one of AMD's APUs, it was the last gen ones that we had to source from overseas because they didn't make them available in North America for whatever reason. So this one is not nearly as bottlenecked as I was expecting. But everything else that I said before, Oh, I know what's happening. Everything else I said before remains true, because most people are not buying a brand new current gen system to run a budget card like this. So most of the systems you would put this thing in, you would experience that kind of uh, performance crippling bottleneck. AMD's website does say 3.0. AMD's website says 3.0? OK, I'm getting some very mixed messages here, because that's what I thought, too. But I guess we're wrong. OK, I need to fix the resolution of this display right now. Oh, no. Uh, I've only ever heard Derek from Vice Grip Garage say automatically. No, no, automatically is like a, a thing. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sure Derek's cool. Sounds like a great show. I, I unfortunately am not familiar with it. So yeah, that's not where I picked it up. Oh, wow. Virtual super resolution, blah, blah, blah. OK. OK. Hardware info seems a little confused. Did, did Doom Eternal just crash? Is that, is that actually what just happened? Doom Eternal just crashed. Uh, OK. Uh, yeah. Yeah, OK. This is the new upgradable laptop. No, this is still the same framework laptop that I had before. I really want a pink beanie. It's my favorite color. Unfortunately, don't sell that or much other pink things. Why is that? Um, the pink ones that, that we've done in that super vibrant pink 
uh, like the one that Chase is wearing over there. Yeah. Um, those have been limited, like Lambo edition products for the most part that are, it's not that we just like wanted to do a pink product, it's that they're themed after my old car, so they're pink with green accents. I think that we would like to do more pink stuff. In fact, one of our new blank t-shirt colors, I think is on some kind of pink. Don't quote me on that, it might not be. It might not be, I might have that completely wrong. Do maternal crashes for me all the time. Really, I have not had, I have not had that issue with it. Oh boy, I do have an issue with it launching at 640 by 480 when you first fire it up every time. Wait, what? <laughs> <gasps> Are you serious right now? Doom Eternal has a check, right? So it tries to anticipate how much video memory you're going to need when you uh, configure your graphics settings. It will not allow me to apply a 1080p resolution setting because it says I have insuffic insufficient VRAM. We haven't even talked much about the fact that it only has four gigs of VRAM in 2022. Oh no. Okay, it's, it's okay. It's because it's at nightmare quality. So we'll go down to medium, 1080p. Now we're good. But that is, that's a freaking issue. I mean, in most games, I guess, I guess it won't really matter because you'd never you'd never be able to run them at a decent frame rate anyway like the the gpu is going to be a bottleneck before the video memory but geez it's, it's definitely amusing <laughs> uh alex d92 says any updates on the big water jugs we're definitely going to do them uh steve called it a waste of sand steve hasn't considered it from my perspective okay if the suckers buy it, more GPUs for us. Right, Steve? <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and fire this puppy up. Here we go. All right. Well, for better or for worse, we are getting over 100 FPS, 1080p medium. Yeah, that's not you know, necessarily I'd, the most difficult thing to do in Doom Eternal. But it's a lot better than having no GPU. And I mean, what's the best gaming system? The one you have, right? Like we've... I don't know, we've seen some really stupid comments on some of the videos that we've done in the past where we've taken, for example, like an old, uh, like an old Dell off of eBay, you know, picked up a new GPU, picked up a new power supply, and, uh, you know, tried to, tried to turn it into, you know, something serviceable. And we've seen people kind of hate on that in the past. And I don't get it, because my first gaming machine, right, was a P1... 166. It was either P1 166 or P190. I think it was P1 166. Was that a fast computer at the time? No. Pentium 3? In fact, I think Pentium 4 had already showed up by that time. So, no, it wasn't a gaming system from an elitist standpoint. Did I game on it? Absolutely. Can we game on this? Absolutely. Did we have higher expectations? Absolutely. But hey, here we are. Here we freaking are. One of the coolest things that's happened over the last, I'd say, five years is how accessible a decent gaming monitor is. Like, it used to be that you had to, I mean, yeah, even if you had an unlimited budget, you couldn't get decent color and decent gaming performance because CRTs had been essentially moved completely out of production worldwide, and LCDs were not up to scratch yet. And then there was a period where you had to pick you had to pick one. You could have fast response times or you could have decent color. And nowadays, you can get something like this and it's decent everything. 144 hertz. At that point, I think we showed in our uh, Does FPS Actually Matter video featuring Shroud, that uh, NVIDIA sponsored one we did a while back. We showed that it makes a difference. And past 144, the, you've, you've reached a point of diminishing returns. So being able to get that for just 
and have an IPS type panel, pretty, pretty, pretty nice at this kind of price point. Of course, the question that remains is, was it worth spending, what does it work out to? About a fifth of our budget. Was it worth spending a fifth of our budget on a 5600 XT? And the only way to know that for sure is to remove it. Let's give it a shot, guys. Did I say, did I, what did I say? 56, 56 sorry, sorry, sorry. 50, I, I got it confused for a GPU that um, was a good value when it came out. Okay, so 6500 XT, here we go. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Would you consider a VA panel decent? Are you talking IPS? I would absolutely consider a VA panel decent. You guys got to remember that what I'm comparing it to is I'm talking about like what's happened over the last years, right? Like there was a time period where anything under 16 milliseconds of you know true response time would have been considered good. Actually, not 16. Sorry, excuse me. I was thinking of uh, 60 FPS, 16 milliseconds per frame times. Uh, I would you know anything under like 12 milliseconds would have been considered you know good, right? Like that's what we maybe not five years then, so maybe 10, 15 years. Um, all right, are we, are we going to post with the onboard GPU? 1060 is similar performance from what I've seen. Yeah, the issue is just that you can't get one, and you can't get one with a warranty on it. Like for a lot of people, and it's something that has never been the end of the world for me, but for a lot of people, that peace of mind is worth you know, giving up some performance. And that's fair enough. Like I get it. OK, did that just completely work? Do you mind just tilting up for a second? Here we go. Let's see how our onboard GPU does. Oh wait, is it a different driver package? I actually did not know that. Let's just see if it'll grab it automatically. Huh. To reinstall the drivers for this device, click reinstall driver. Hey, thanks Windows. And where exactly would I do that? Super useful. Oh, and it's done. Cool. <laughs> Retry connection. <laughs> Love it. All right. Let's see how our integrated GPU does. Doom Eternal. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is something that's interesting. We tried to communicate this, man, I guess it would have been about three years ago. We tried to start uh, redoing our performance per dollar calculations. Instead of just looking at it on an individual component level, which I realized when I was working at NCIX is not actually the correct way to do it. You can't take a GPU that costs $500 and one that costs $250 and go, this one should be double the performance of this one. Intuitively, that makes sense, but that's not actually correct because you are, in most cases, not just buying a GPU. Most people buy a whole system. So. What I learned was that when you're trying to spec out a balanced system, you need to consider the full cost of the system compared to each individual component's uplift in terms of cost. And we tried to create graphs that reflected this uh, when we did things like GPU or CPU reviews, where we tried to spec out a, um, a reasonable accompanying build, right? when we did the calculation for whether it was a good value or not. Because if you were going to spend, let's say, $1,000 on a gaming system, is it worthwhile to spend twice as much on your GPU for a 50% increase if that only increased your overall budget by 20%? Right? Whoa, right? If you have a $200 GPU and you spend $400, your total budget increase was only 20%. So as long as it's more than 20% faster at double the price, it's actually a good value. So it's just a different way of thinking about it um, from a full system perspective rather than from a component perspective. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to come out and say, hey, 6500 XT, great value, go and buy it. But it does mean that I'm giving you guys an alternate way of looking at it for people who are buying a new system today comparing onboard graphics versus the 6500 XT. So you could look at onboard graphics and you could say they cost zero dollars, therefore any dedicated graphics card needs to be infinitely faster. But it's not really that simple. 
by taking our $750 system here and spending another $250, we are going to go from, give it a second, and da 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 we're going to go from about 35 FPS all the way up to 100. It's a different level. So that was really the punchline of this whole thing. I spent a lot of time in this stream sort of ranting about the 6500 XT, but there is another way of looking at it, and you guys have to understand that not every customer is doing the same calculation when they're specking out a machine. So does that, does, have you guys kind of figured out where I was going with this now? Yeah, the settings are identical. Of course they are. I didn't change anything. 1920 by 1080 medium. It's like, yeah, AMD makes great onboard GPUs. But even a card that gets absolutely slammed by the media, and rightly so, AMD made some design uh, compromises here that I think undermine the value of the product, right? It's still a lot faster than onboard graphics. <laughs> like that's, uh, there you go. That's the, that's, the whole, that's the whole thing, guys. That's the, that's the moral of the story. That's the big finish. That's where we were heading to this whole time. Yes, um, this is not the ideal situation. But if you got to make the most of it, go check out Micro Center. At least it's in stock. It's better than nothing. And that's all she wrote. Oh, wait, are there any merch messages that I need to uh, address before we go? Yeah, there's this one I curated to the top, and then there's sure. another a little further down. All right. Oh, sorry, come back up to the top for the one I curated. Thank you. Bougie pillow for the win. Love it. Uh, Steven says, hey, Linus, now that you have some Linux experience, have you thought about doing an Arch Linux challenge? Try and get a system up and running using nothing but the Arch Wiki and Google. Maybe you can do it together. Um, honestly, I haven't, because for me, my next big Linux adventure is going to be SteamOS 3.0. Uh, Valve has taken such an amazing, I think, just groundbreaking approach to the work that they're doing on the Steam Deck. I mean, they've been working, we can tell, right? Because remember Steam Machines? Valve has been working on this initiative for years, years. And they're making the whole thing accessible to the entire open source community. I mean, it's so freaking cool. The fact that they have said, look, you can open up the hardware. You can replace the hardware. You can freaking, uh, you can install our SteamOS 3.0 on other hardware. How cool is that, right? So I want to try SteamOS 3.0 on not a Steam Deck. I think that's going to be my next sort of custom rig Linux adventure. Um, hey, thanks, trolls, trolls. Uh, I look forward to the whatever. That's the thought about it. Will Linus model for the women's underwear? Don't think I'd be able to convince my girlfriend otherwise. I had not intended to. Mm -hmm. I would love a mouse roundup for people with different size hands. So that's actually something I had in mind for the lab. It's not something that we'd be able to do ourselves perfectly, but one of the ideas that I pitched in uh, one of our meetings about it was, hey, you know what would be really cool as part of our sort of uh, repository of data is if we um, sort of made a little tutorial for people to measure their hands, uh, then what we did was we had them take a picture of their hand on the mouse with some kind of verification. We could even just do it like you know, Craigslist style, right? So you just got like your, your username on a piece of paper and the date or something like that, like in the picture. So we, we get you to take a picture of your hand on the mouse, and then we have you rate it in terms of comfort and leave a couple of comments. And then what we could do is we could have people go and measure their hand using our methodology and say, hey, show me mice that are, that are generally rated comfortable for people with my hand size. Because it's, it's just not something that you can create enough data on your own unless you are the manufacturer and you're literally commissioning studies, right? Uh, but for us, there's a way that we could come up with maybe to crowdsource it. So that was one of the ideas that I had that I thought would be super cool. Um, I'm going to clean up those PC cables. Yeah, I'm just not going to bother. Sorry to hear about the screwdriver. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Um, yeah, but I paid $3,000 for a MacBook Pro. Did I get scammed? No. I mean, as long as you knew that that was what you were buying, then you didn't get scammed. A scam means they deceived you in some meaningful way. You knew you were buying a MacBook Pro. If you're not satisfied with it, that's a whole other, that's a whole other conversation. All right. Because I was told not to, UN Synapse. 
hilarious. Bought a, an expensive edition pillow. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. I will see you guys on the next video upload, which I guess will be, uh, oh, I guess it'll be Wancho. No, I'll see you on Wancho tomorrow.